Good evening, I'm Jeff Vaughn. And I'm Lena Wynn. Well, last night we ran a feature on concerns with protesters at Trump rallies. Today, those concerns escalated to an extreme. And the day started with issues in St. Louis and hit a fever pitch in Chicago where an ugly scene unfolded. Political reporter Dave Bryan is uh, in now and joins us on those uh, details. Dave, good evening. Good evening. No one knows better than you guys that how crazy this you know campaign has been. We've had some wild and, and woolly nights, but this really is a whole new chapter. After heated confrontations in St. Louis, Lewis this morning, Donald Trump's scheduled Chicago rally was canceled before it began after thousands of protesters converged on the University of Illinois Chicago Fieldhouse with the goal of shutting down the rally. It was the night when the passions and anger on both sides of the Donald Trump presidential campaign boiled out onto the streets of Chicago and shut down a scheduled Trump rally. Mr. Trump just arrived in Chicago and after meeting with law enforcement has determined that for the safety of all the tens of thousands of people that have gathered in and around the arena, tonight's rally will be postponed until another day. Thank you very much for your attendance and please go in peace. But there was little peace in the University of Illinois Chicago arena. Fights between Trump supporters and protesters broke out across the arena floor, and police made dozens of arrests. Outside, the scene was no less volatile, as thousands of Trump protesters mixed with his supporters as they left the arena. Police made arrests outside the building as well. CBS Chicago the caught the violence on the streets. Police rush from their posts outside the UIC pavilion. They find a struggle between officers and a protester, and that protester finds himself subdued and bloodied on the pavement of a nearby intersection. A handful of other activists are taken away by law enforcement, the violence impacting police as well as an officer is spotted bleeding at the scene. Tonight, we won, okay? Trump told CNN's Don Lemon in a telephone interview why he decided to shut down the rally. I don't want to see anybody hurt, Don. So I met with law enforcement and I think we made the wise decision to cancel. And we made a decision, even though our freedom of speech is violated totally. Get him out, troublemaker. Earlier in St. Louis, Trump and a packed house of supporters confronted a large group of protesters, some inspired by the Black Lives Matter group. At least one protester had a bloody nose, and several others were handcuffed by security. Still another went limp and was carried out. Young spoiled kids, get them out of here. I'll tell you, these are not good people, folks. At a news conference, Trump seemed to be blaming the unrest in St. Louis on the protesters. We've had a couple that were really violent, and you know what? The audience swung back. And I thought it was very, very appropriate. This week, a North Carolina man was charged with assault after he was caught on camera punching a protester. And also this week, a reporter for Breitbart News, a conservative website, filed a police report after alleging she was manhandled by a Trump campaign official. The campaign vigorously denies the charge. The violent images are another reason why the GOP establishment is trying to stop Trump's march to the nomination. Some analysts believe Trump's tough, fiery rhetoric is inciting the violence, and CNN's Don Lemon asked Trump about that. What about, in particular, the things that you have said in rallies about this, taking them out on stretchers and that sort of thing? Do you have any regrets about what you've said these about These were bad. No, I don't have regrets because these were very, very bad uh, protesters. These were bad dudes. They were very rough, tough guys, and they... Did a lot of damage. But former presidential advisor David Gergen told CNN this could be a make or break moment for the Trump campaign. This is maybe one of the most important moments of the entire campaign. This could cost him the nomination. It could also catapult him. We don't know which way it's going to cut. I think a lot of people are going to be frightened and horrified. We had this kind of we had this kind of violence in Chicago in 1968 Democratic Convention. 48 years later, we still talk about it. Well, tonight, Chicago police told a news conference they advised Donald Trump there were enough officers at the rally to keep things safe for everyone. They say it was Trump's decision to cancel the rally, despite their reassurances. And joining us now, UCLA professor of political science and communications, Dr. Lynn Vavrick. Thank you very much for joining us. I want to, hey, you're welcome, Dave. I want to ask you, first of all, do you agree with David Gergen that this could be a make or break moment for Donald Trump's presidential campaign? 
Well, I, I agree with David Gergen that we're not sure yet which way this could go. And that's one of the strangest things about the events that happened tonight, is that it could cost Trump the nomination, depending on how he chooses to handle it, or it really could solidify his support and attract new supporters. Um, it's been a very strange election cycle. This is an unusual event. Um, and I don't think anybody knows quite what to expect tomorrow. And, and I think adding to that is, is the, uh, the reality that it comes uh, just a few days uh, before some of the most important primaries in winner-take-all states. Would you agree? That's right. The stakes are getting higher and higher. If there is a way to keep Donald Trump from earning a majority of those delegates, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take shape in the next couple of days. And so everybody, all, all emotions are heightened, and everybody's trying what they can uh, at this point to make their play for these last couple of primaries. Um, you, you know, there was a mention uh, by David Gergen of 1968 and, and the riots in Chicago then uh, during a presidential election year, which, which had a very dramatic effect, if I recall correctly, uh, on the outcome of the campaign. Do you think something like that is possible this year as well? Well, I think there are some parallels to the Democratic Convention in 68. And uh, for viewers, if, if you're not familiar with the violence at that convention, um, it would it would you know be an interesting uh, internet search to read what happened in '68 in Chicago. And some of those images tonight are very evocative of that convention. Now, the aftermath of Chicago '68 was a complete reform of the nominating process, and that's how we end up with all these primaries with binding delegates. And the one thing that I say will be similar is after 2016, the Republican Republicans are going to sit down and revisit how they're awarding delegates and the sequencing and the timing. Very interesting. Professor Vavrick, thank you so much. We appreciate your time and your insights. Sure. So still uh, a lot going on with regard to uh, the Trump campaign and, and the election coming up. Yeah, thank you.